Item 10A, receive a quarterly financial update report as of December 31, 2014, and adopt resolution approving a mid-year amendment for the 2014-15 General Fund, Special Revenue Funds, Enterprise Funds, and Capital Improvement Budgets. Angela. Put your mic on, Angela. There you go. Never fails. The City's mid-year budget report is prepared in order to compare the revenues and expenditures in the first six months of the current year with both the budget and the first six months of the prior year. Overall, general fund revenues are on track at 51% of budget. This is approximately $2 million more than the prior year. Just to talk about a couple of the key revenues, um, property tax is up 35% or approximately $1 million compared to the prior year. And part of this is because we received the um, redistribution of the redevelopment tax uh, increment funds earlier this year than we did last year. So last year it was reflected in the third quarter re report. Um, departmental revenues, we're seeing some significant increases in building and planning. And this is due to an increase in development-related activity. And these are hard to pr predict, as I said, in the staff report. So we'll continue to monitor this, and we may come forward if there's a material increase and ask for an adjustment in the third quarter. One area that, um, just another area that I want to watch is that um, business tax revenues are up approximately $97,000. However, um, if you look at the budget, we have 3.2 budgeted in 14-15. We had 2.3 budgeted last year. Um, we were at 97% in the prior year, and now we're at 74%. So this is a 23% drop. Um, profit, our business taxes are received majority up front. We have the airport tax that's also included in that. So. I will continue to monitor this and see, um, do some research and see if maybe we over budgeted or if something we're anticipating something coming in that I'm not aware of. General fund expenditures, overall, we're doing very well. We're at 49% of budget, right where you want to be. So um, it is 951,000 um, more than last year, but that was um, it reflected in the budget. Onto the enterprise and internal service funds, the water fund. Revenues are down approximately $300,000, and this in large part can be contributed to water consumption uh, due to the ongoing drought. The wastewater fund revenues at mid-year were approximately $7.1 million compared to $6.7 million in the prior year, and this is due to six months of rate increases from the approved five-year rate adjustment schedule. Cable television, um, actual revenues are um, lower by 48000 However, the budget did reflect this. We did decrease the, the budget in the prior year, or in this year, and uh, uh, revenues are still outpacing expenditures, so it seems to be at least self-sufficient. Self-insurance fund, this fund is over the 50% mark at 65%, however, the expenditure totals are 206,000 less than the prior year, and this is due to a significant decrease in claims. Various budget adjustments have been approved by the council since the budget adoption in June, and I have them listed here in September, a new agreement with the San Bruno Park Dis School District which required the city to pay additional facility use fees and the school district to reimburse the city of maintenance of school fields. On October 14th, the acceptance of the Office of Traffic Safety Grant, and on October 28, 2014, the purchase of the 324 Florida Avenue property. As part of the mid-year process, the budget is reviewed to determine if any adjustments should be included in this report, and we do have some. Um, we're asking for an additional um, increase in revenue for 70, of $75,000 and an increase in expenditures in the of uh, $50,000 in the Recreation Department. And this is due to the addition of the first and second grades at Portola and John Muir Elementary Schools and the city's after-school adventure programs. In the library, we're asking for an increase of $12,000 in appropriation, and this is due to the Peninsula Library System's increased costs for um, both shared and bandwidth costs. 
And the parks maintenance staff is proposing an appropriation of $45,000 to address open space areas to mitigate ongoing fire hazards. This appropriation was previously included in the CIP budget, but we believe that it's more accurate to, to reflect it in the city's operating budget. In the city manager's office, we're asking for an increase to fund ongoing and future economic development with an increase of $125,000. And this is from the RDA boomerang funds that the city will receive in 1415 and um, was originally budgeted in 1314 and inadvertently not carried over uh, for reappropriation in the 1415 budget. In the facilities fund, we are asking for an increase of $20,347 to repair the city hall generator. Overall, the net increase to the general fund would be uh, in appropriations would be $157,000, and then the facility funds would be $20,347. And with that, that completes my report. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for our finance director? Through the chair, Michael. Um, <clears throat> I did have a, a few questions on uh, some of the changes that are being proposed. Uh, first, regarding the library, shared and bandwidth costs, what does that mean? So we normally pay um, the shared costs, I believe, is, and I may need our community services director to explain it a little bit better, but the, um, the shared costs, I believe, is all the libraries pay a certain portion to the Peninsula Library Services. The bandwidth costs I'm not as familiar with. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. As you know, through the Peninsula Library System, there's a wide array of services that we benefit from that are actually delivered by them. And they've incurred additional cost associated with our internet-based public use computer system. And so those are expenses that they, pa they host the servers, they troubleshoot all the issues that exist, and they provide the hardware. So the cost associated with that actually increased for the fiscal 14-15 budget, but I didn't become aware of it. We didn't become aware of it until after we had actually put to together the proposed budget for the council's consideration. So it's not bandwidth per se, <clears throat> excuse me, that we're talking, we're talking about the actual library website and the public access computers in the library? It's actually the bandwidth expenses and service related to the catalog that they host and the public use computers that are available in the library for people to use. Those are actually hosted by the Peninsula Library System through a shared server. I'm a little bit out of my technical depth, but a shared server that they host and manage and the backbone that they support. Okay. I'm not sure that makes sense to me, but um, okay. Thank you for, for trying to explain it. Maybe I can uh, dig in a little deeper later. Um, regarding parks and maintenance, there's not a lot of detail around here. There's a comment in here that the list of areas requiring annual attention continues to grow. So does that mean that the, the number of areas that we service is increasing or just that the areas that we've always serviced now require more attention? <laughs> I think this is really a reference, and I'll ask the community services director to actually stand by in case. Um, this is an item, as the finance director indicated, that is has in recent years, it's, it, unfortunately, it's bounced around a little bit between the operating budget and the capital budget, and was not included in the capital budget, and is also not included in the operating budget this year. Um, I think the increase refers to the fact that the amount that has been budgeted in the recent couple of previous years is 30,000. Um, and so the 45,000 represents a um, modest, I would say, increase in the amount of territory that would be attended to in the normal annual program to abate fire hazards and um, in particular tree hazards. The, um, this is an issue that really does, um, in, it does require 
uh, additional attention, um, estimates of the annual need that the fire department and the parks division have identified um, run to $100,000 annually plus. Um, so there's both a resource, uh, financial resource, as well as a um, human resource or capacity to perform the work effort that really is otherwise indicated. So the fact that it appears tonight and that the increase is represented as a talking point um, really relates to the comparison to the $30,000 that has recently historically been budgeted. Okay. It, it sounds to me like it's a bit of a Band-Aid fix then. It's a bigger problem. I, I don't think we're really, uh, from what we're seeing here, we don't really see what the, the areas are that we're talking about. We, we can't really understand if you're addressing all of the areas that, that we're aware of. We don't have an opportunity to look at those areas and understand what, what the real impact is. Um, I, I know that there was some funding that was discussed um, to address tree issues in the Glenview area that's being Correct. funded separately. Correct. So without understanding sort of comprehensively what we're addressing with this money, and I know it's, it's, not, a, it's not a lot of money, but it, it does seem like something that does deserve probably more attention and maybe a little bit more analysis than, than what we're seeing here yeah, before I think we that commit to it. Staff agrees with you about that, and we would certainly be prepared to provide that to you um, at least um, as soon as the uh, upcoming budget deliberations for fiscal year 15, 16, which are coming up later this spring. But it's a, it's a topic that warrants, um, I would say, more attention, um, as you indicate, than it has historically received. Um, the, in terms of the uh, material that's presented to you tonight is sort of deliberately um, abbreviated because this is a topic that has shown in our, one, one place or another in our budget historically and we um, um, are simply continuing a comparable level of effort, um, but it is a topic that uh, we would certainly welcome the opportunity to dive into a little bit more detail with the City Council and, and give you a more uh, comprehensive and realistic picture of uh, what it might take to address the many areas of open space, forested area in our community. Okay. And um, I also had a, a question about the, the funds that are being allocated um, for the... Um, the transit corridor plan, because again, I got the impression here that we're, we're talking about a lot of little programs, but no, there's no real sort of uh, real plan. I mean, what, what are we trying to accomplish within the next year, within the next five years, within the next 10 years? And um, I, I mean, it, some of the things that are mentioned, facade improvement, for example, could be a very short term. Um, very um, successful short-term program, but if within three years we're talking about replacing a bunch of buildings and maybe re replacing the facades is not a good idea. So again, this is something where rather than just say, okay, we're going to do some things and then kind of go forward with it and throw a little bit of money at it, I'd like to see more of a, a well-developed plan that kind of helps me feel good about spending 100000 this year and knowing that that's going to give us some, some incremental benefit. In, um, in the coming years. So um, again, I just, uh, I, I kind of understand where that's going and I know it was previously allocated, but I, I think I would feel a lot more comfortable about approving the money if I understood the, the, the vision, the short-term and the long-term vision a little bit better. Yeah, let me, let me give you a, a preliminary response because again, I agree that this is a topic uh, that uh, staff is working on a, um, having, having achieved the first step in implementation of our transit corridor plan with the successful ballot measure um, on the November ballot related to development standards. Um, we are actively and busily in the process of developing a proposed work program to support uh, a more comprehensive implementation of the transit corridor plan and the vision for the downtown. Um, this uh, essentially carry forward amount um, is actually intended uh, as a fairly um, 
uh, preliminary uh, level of activity associated with, um, frankly, some of the um, um, work that's already been performed associated with economic analysis relative to the development standards that were part of the city's, not the campaign, but the city's work effort associated with the change in the development standards that has uh, recently been accomplished. Um, I recently became aware that this funding source had not been carried forward, and so this this is the reason that this is being brought forward to you tonight. Okay. All right. If well, I I'm, can chime in on this, also. Uh, okay. yeah. Go ahead. Oh, go <coughs> before it does, and, and and I, I got charged up when I saw future economic development and even six figures is, is odd, and, and then seeing a list of items under it, I, I figured, well, that's just an allowance. It's not really right. going to take care of all those programs. Right. But I don't, I mean, I know what, I think we all know what staff is doing as far as, uh, you know, zoning ordinance changes and, you know, a whole slew of things. Right. But I don't want uh, the victory of Measure N to go too far into 2015 without letting the greater public know what our plan is. And maybe, you know, yes, we do need to dis discuss it more, but I get questions now, because so what is going to happen about, you know, the transit quarters plan? Do, do developers know, you know, the opportunities here, and how do we do that? You know, and is, you know, maybe that's not staff's, you know, uh, you know responsibility. Maybe that's something that we need to spend money on to, you know, really promote this community. So that's my two cents on that. So it's both staff responsibility and it's the um, subject of a more focused and uh, expansive work effort. Um, I can assure you that that is something that is um, daily in process and, um, you know, so therefore not necessarily terribly ex expensive, but it is something that um, we're actively working on. As you mentioned, the zoning ordinance changes and a variety of other um, relatively um, behind the scenes type of work efforts in addition to regular communication with the development community um, we have people all the time who are interested in kicking tires about a particular location or a particular type of use and um, this is a this is the primary topic of our interest is to make sure that they know uh, about the opportunities that the, the transit corridor plan um, and its implementation present. Um, what should follow as part of our work program is a more comprehensive actual marketing program. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Um, Anything else, Michael? No, not, not for now. Thank you. Rico? <laughs> Uh, just on, on those, uh, the uh, fire mitigation, I know that is something I had asked about as far as, you know, 30,000 doesn't go very far when I've gone to a person on Rolling Wood and gone through their backyard because they had a concern or up in the Buckeye area. So needless to say, I've asked in the past that we maybe kind of assess and how is that assessed and how often is that assessed. Uh, granted, we're not going to have probably enough money to go to where it needs to go, uh, but I would like to have also an understanding for me sitting on the council when I'm asked how is this developed, how is it analyzed, how often is it. Um, as far as the, um, uh, the funding for future economic development, I know that was uh, budgeted but not spent, therefore being asked to be carried over as other items have been and are in the budget. So do we have a timeline of that? And I'd like to see some type of measurable items and, and how are we going to measure their success and what is our strategy going forward. So I'd like to see that come forward too with those type of uh, costs and expenditures. Anyone else? All right. We're asking for a uh, action on this, adopt a resolution. Would anyone like to introduce that resolution? Through the chair, before uh, before we uh, introduce it, I, I just want to make a comment. I, I know uh, I had a lot of a lot of detailed questions on this, and I apologize to staff for not submitting my, any questions in advance. I, I try to get those done, but uh, didn't have a whole lot of time to go through this this weekend, so I do apologize for that. But. Um, I just want to say, you know, I, I do appreciate the effort that did go into this report, but I, I think without additional uh, details, I can't support it. And so I just wanted to say that up front that um, 
I really, I really think we need to put a lot more uh, detail into this before I'd be comfortable with uh, approving the additional funds. So thank okay. you for any other comments or action by the council. Through the chair, I'd like to introduce the resolution. Councilmember Ibera. Aye. Councilmember O'Connell. Aye. Councilmember Medina. Aye. Vice Mayor Salazar. No. Mayor Ruane. Aye.